Hi friends, creating knowledge graphs is becoming easier and easier with the advancements in LLMs and LLM frameworks. A couple of weeks ago, Langchain has introduced new functionality to create knowledge graphs from raw text. So in this video, we will see how to do that. All right. So let's do a bunch of installs uh, related to Langchain, Langchain community, experimental and also OpenAI support. Uh, we also need Neo4j desktop uh, to for graph database and Neo4j uh, SDK uh, client. All right. So the main modules we are going to use are this LLM graph transformer. Uh, this is a new functionality introduced just a couple of weeks ago by Langchain community. So whenever Langchain community develop new features, they will be part of the Langchain experimental. Okay. And we will be using Neo4j graph uh, for loading the knowledge graph into the graph database. And OpenAI, uh, but we can use any uh, open source LLMs, uh, for example, Llama2, Mistral, etc. Again, using uh, this Olama wrapper from Langchain. Okay. I already have my OpenAI API key in my environmental variables, so I don't need to set it explicitly. But here I'm defining my LLM. So it's GPT-4. Now temperature zero, uh, this is very important because here we are extracting factual information from a given text. We are not doing any creative writing. Uh, uh, so that's why we need to set the temperature to zero whenever we create any knowledge graphs using any LLMs. Okay. All right. So instantiate an LLM and then uh, provide it to this LLM graph transformer. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, this is the functionality we are going to use uh, to create knowledge graphs. And then uh, these are Neo4j uh, local uh, database credentials. These are the default ones. You don't need to change anything. Uh, but to be able to use this, uh, you need to install Neo4j desktop client and also create a database, which I will show you in a minute. And you have to run the database so that it's active. Uh, so that we can uh, add the graph data into the graph database. Okay, so here we have a small piece of text. Uh, it's about uh, the physicist or scientist uh, Mary Curie. Uh, it's about uh, the areas she worked on, the prizes she has won. And uh, it also talks about her husband, uh, who also won uh, uh, or shared a Nobel Prize with her and uh, where she worked it. Okay, uh, some... Uh, it's a regular text, but with uh, very rich information. All right, then, uh, so using documents, uh, again, Langchain document, uh, we uh, create the document. Uh, we create the document and simply call this LLM transformer, which is coming from this LLM uh, graph transformer. Okay, and uh, just simply supply the documents. Okay, uh, this transformer, it already connected to the uh, LLM. Right. So that's all we need to do. So it will return uh, uh, it will return a result which contain both the nodes and the relationships. So because we have used only one document. So this is our first document and these are all the nodes from the first document. So we are going over all the nodes and printing the node information. So this will have the ID which is actually the node uh, content itself and it will also uh, uh, have the type right for example here mary curie it's of type person and then uh, she is polish uh, this is of type nationality right and similarly here uh, the chemist uh, this is an occupation and nobel prize this is an award and uh, mary curie uh, it's her husband and this is also person and then here we have a university name which is our organization type right so we simply need to define our text documents and we'll use this LLM graph transformer to which we need to supply an LLM. It can be OpenAI or it can be any open source LLM and that's it really. So just supply your documents and we can get the nodes. And then we are doing the same thing. Again, we have only one document. That's why this index is zero. And then here we are printing the relationships. Now the relationships, 
it connect two nodes, right? A source node and a target node. So that's why for every relationship, we see three pieces of information. So the first one, it is connecting the source node, Mary Curie, and it again display the type, but the source node ID is enough. So it's a person Mary Curie. And then uh, the target is, uh, target value is Polish and the relationship is nationality. So Mary Curie, nationality is Polish, right? That's how uh, uh, we see it. And for example, let's look at one more. So this is her husband. And here, uh, the target is uh, Nobel Prize and the relationship is award one. Okay. So we have extracted uh, the nodes and the relationship. And now we simply load them into uh, Neo4j database simply using this uh, add graph documents. Okay. Now, um, so when you install Neo4j client, uh, this is how it looks like. So first you need to create a new project. Just give it a name, uh, 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 standard information. And then I'm going back. Uh, one second. So yeah, so these are all the projects I have created. And I am going and make one of the projects active. Meaning, for example, currently I have created this new database called uh, new project called Langchain. And then it is active. So uh, you see this active here, right? So when you have a database, you need to make it active so that it can start accepting the data and you can visualize it locally, right? Once you start the database, then click on this open and Neo4j browser, okay? So Neo4j browser is, uh, is this, okay? So from Neo4j client, we are opening Neo4j browser where we can visualize the data, right? So this is what we have. Uh, 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 the graph transformer, it has uh, extracted these nine nodes and here you can see those nodes and also the relationship. So the central one is this uh, Mary Curie. Now again, uh, it should have displayed here, but because uh, it could not fit into it, uh, it's not there. But the central node, this is Mary Curie. And then here you can see all the relationships, right? For example, award one, uh, uh, she is a professor at University of Paris her nationality, uh, occupation, uh, so uh, occupation. So she is both a chemist and physicist, right? Uh, and then here uh, we have her husband and they both share uh, one of the Nobel Prize. She won another Nobel Prize herself, but they both share uh, this uh, uh, one Nobel Prize. Now, as you can see, even though these two people are connected, uh, uh, because they are spouse to each other, thus relationship is not uh, been uh, automatically uh, extracted by the uh, graph transformer, right? So in such a case, what we can do is, so when we are defining this graph transformer, we can define what sort of nodes we would like to have and what sort of relationships we would like to have. So maybe when you start a new project, we can leave it uh, this open-ended so that we can see what sort of nodes and relationships are coming up and then we can de decide which ones are important to us, which one we can ignore and which ones are missing so that we can uh, add them to the list uh, when we create uh, the second version of uh, graph uh, entities, right? So here we are explicitly saying, hey, I am interested in only these three types of nodes, right? Person, country and organization. So whereas if you look at here, we have person, uh, um, uh, the nationality, the research area, the awards, uh, quite a few, right? So here we are saying the node type must be one of these three only. And then the allowed relationships are nationality located in work date and spouse. So this time we are explicitly asking if there are any spouse relationships in the given text, do extract those relationships, okay? And this time we are storing the results into this LLM uh, transformer filter, sorry, we are uh, instantiating this LLM transformer and then we are uh, supplying the same documents. Uh, and if you look at the nodes, this time we have fewer nodes, right? And all these nodes must belong to, into one of these three types. So the person, country, organization, only these three. Now, if you look at the relationship, we should have a new relationship, which is this spouse. 
um, where is it? Yeah, so here we can see the source is Marie Curie, the target is Perry Curie, and the relationship is a spouse. Okay, and we can load this data. So let's do one thing. So we'll delete all this data. Um, here. Yep, so here we are matching. Uh, so this is a, a cipher syntax. Uh, which is somewhat similar to uh, SQL, but for graph databases. So here, match me is something like select all. So we are selecting all the nodes, all the nine nodes, and we are deleting all of them. So let me delete. I have deleted all of them. So if I do this, one second. Yeah, no records. And then if I run this query, so it should not return anything. So this time here we are returning maximum 25 nodes. Okay. If there was anything, it should have been displayed here. Okay. So we have deleted it. Now let's add this data to the database. So we have added and let's rerun this query. Uh, so this time, as you can see, we have fewer nodes and uh, fewer relationships. One of them is the spouse. So this is Marie Curie and this is Perry Curie and their relationship is spouse. So this way uh, we can control what sort of nodes we would like to have and what sort of relationships we would like to have. So as I mentioned, uh, it's becoming easier and easier. Uh, earlier, whenever we have a piece of text, we had to do a lot of text processing. Right? We used to extract uh, uh, the entities, uh, uh, the, the relationship, uh, text cleaning uh, and deduplication, uh, so, so and so forth. Right, But it is becoming easier both with frameworks like Langchain as well as uh, the advancements in LLMs. Uh, that's pretty much for this video. Uh, thank you very much.